Today in Jamaica, we are celebrating what? National Teachers Day? Is it National Teachers Day? It's, it's not National, it's Teachers Day. Yes. So, it is Teachers Day 2022 here in Jamaica. And it is my honor, my privilege, distinguished privilege to be spending the time with Mother Wells, aka, well, Mrs. Ruby Wells, aka Mother Wells and her family. And uh, today we wanted to take some time to remember the work that she has done with us at the New Day All Age, then New Day Primary Junior High Now School. And so, Today we are enjoying some time with her and I wanted to interview you, Mother Wells, to ask you a few questions on your, your words of encouragement for educators in today, today's 21st century. So tell us what your words of encouragement for us. Teachers need to know the facts that they are imparting to their students and make sure that they have it right because if they give false information, it's going to be related back to them somehow. The children are going to say, teacher never told me this or teacher never told me that. They need to be exact in what they are telling their children and look over what their children have recorded from what they have told them. You know, these are the days when children will say, but Miss, you're wrong, and Miss, you never said that. They must be definite and let the children record information that they pass on to them. Very good. Thank you so much, teacher. It is important. And I did not mention this. And how can I not mention this? That Mrs. Ruby Wells, our mother Wells, is, I can safely say, one of Jamaica's, if not Jamaica's, eldest, eldest educator. She just celebrated her, her 101st birthday last week and so words of wisdom is probably wisdom in itself is, is is a powerful word and I am so happy that we are we are able to share in this moment and to relish the importance of education and educators and what better way to spend this historic day with such a historic woman and uh, do you have any, I won't say last words because we know you have a lot of words and you still have a lot more to give us. But do you have any more things you want, any more words you want to share with us before we wrap up this interview? Just need to be patient with their students. Everybody does not grasp information at the same rate at the same time. So make sure you have time to spend with the children and remember it takes time to assimilate knowledge and to be able to relate because children relay their information to their parents and if teachers give them false information they are going to go home and relate it to their parents so be patient with the children children don't learn at the same rate as a matter of fact Boys seem to grasp things slower than girls. So don't get mad when you have taught a lesson and the boys are not able to respond to your questions as quickly as the girls. It takes time. Anything you're doing to be successful, it takes time for you to see the results of your effort, your class and the subject that you were imparting to the students. Thank you so much. One last question I'll ask you for this interview. 
what age did you enter the education field in terms of teaching i should say you know something i had passed the third year jamaican local i was in kingston at a secondary school we returned to St. Elizabeth to live and because I had a love for teaching because I used to go to the trees, teach them the timetables and beat them with the strap if they, they didn't respond. And so when I came back, I had done an um, exam in junior Cambridge, mm -hmm. took about 10 subjects, passed nine of them failed health science mm -hmm. and so they didn't no certificates were granted in those days and i came home and i started a little basic school right in the home where i am living mm -hmm. and i remember there was a grown young lady there who could not read mm -hmm. and so she came to me for classes at a little basic school and so I, she, when I saw that she couldn't read, I said, you have to read. And I taught her to read from the Bible. Mm. And she started from Genesis. And she eventually got married and is a member of a church out there reading her Bible and reading any book that she came across. So and I started from the trees and the, the grass mm. and the, out in the lawn. Mm plating the hair and the grass like hair. Yes. And so I had the inclination from early to be a teacher. I taught them the table, time tables was a, a must mm -hmm. from two times up to 12 times. So, and then I left home down here about in 1945 and mm -hmm. went to Kingston and I taught in Clarendon, mm. um, out in St. Mary, mm -hmm. and uh, Portland, mm. and then eventually the last place I taught in at um, St. Andrew Cavalier School, mm. and then I went into Money Teachers Training College, mm. and from there in 1961 mm. I got position as one of six teachers to start New Day All in School mm -hmm. up in the area called Drum Blair. Mm -hmm. I taught there for 20 years and six months retired in 1981. Wow. And then I got a job as um, a teacher at Don Robin Prep School. I stayed there for 10 years. Then I left Don Robin Prep and taught at Kingsgate Prep School for 20 years. Wow. So, so that's about, in terms of formal teaching, not counting you teaching the grass and the, and the, and the trees. But if we were to count the grass and the trees, you would be 90 years of teaching. Well, and possibly. And formal teaching, we are looking at about 60, 60, almost 65 years based on what your, your, um, the year you went to New Day. Well, possibly. So, can you imagine that 60 years of teaching? I can't imagine 60 years of life much more 60 years of teaching which is so teaching is so it's like selfless the thing if you love something you will gravitate to it every opportunity you get and life is a school from which you don't graduate until your eyes are closed in death and that is so profound and we we know that by God's grace yours will not be closed anytime soon in Jesus name this lady here she has so much to give she has given so much and still has so much more to give 
and so mother wells we on this edu on this teacher's day we applaud you for your work we thank god for your life and for your life's work your life's journey we thank god for your family we thank god for all the individuals you have touched all those you have touched indirectly and those you have touched directly i know for me you have touched indirectly at new day because you were there before i got there and i have been benefited from a lot of the work that you did there so indirectly but i am so happy to know that i am still being touched direct i am touched directly by your work because every day or every week we know that we can expect a call or two or three or maybe seven from you <laughs> so we are so happy david and i are so happy that we're able to take this time and um, i know that the, the when we met when i met you the first time i told you that i believe that one of the reasons i'm here in jamaica or back in jamaica is to to connect with you and to spend time with you and I am so happy that God made this possible that we could come again and see you and spend time with you and um, we look forward by God's grace to doing it again real soon in the name of Jesus so thank you for this time for this interview and we pray that God will continue to guide you, strengthen you, and provide everything you need and more for the name's honor and glory of his kingdom. In Jesus' name. And thank you so much too for your family, Miss Beryl. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your care and support towards your cousin. Yes, we appreciate you. And uh, Miss Sharon, <laughs> we thank we thank God for you. <laughs> One last thought: whatever you teach must be based on the man Christ Jesus, because he is the teacher of teachers. And if you are not connected with him, you will not be impelled to pass on information that will mold lives both for now and for eternity. Amen. Need I say more? I need not say more. Mic check, mic check. What a wells? Mic check. What's your name, Mom? Ruby Wells. You're sure? Definitely. Alright, good.